We're in a season where Leviathan is attacking with great fury. You need to discern this and you need to know how to deal with it. Now, here's the thing. There's different strategies for different manifestations of different spirits in different battles. Now, here's the thing. Leviathan keeps visiting our ministry. It's different names and different faces, but it's the same spirit influencing people to tear down what God is building. We've seen this over and over and over. Awakening House of Prayer was launched in 2010, and we've seen this over and over and over, over the years. But after the third time in just a year of dealing with Leviathan tactics, I had to seek the Lord for a new strategy. And that's because even if you're battling the same demonic powers, there's more way to skin a dragon. <laughs> God can shift the battle strategy. Let me give you an example. Last March, I did a service addressing Leviathan head on. Now, I wasn't battling Leviathan. I was exposing Leviathan. I was exposing exposing the tactics, the characteristics of the spirit. And what happens is when people come under the influence of the spirit, they begin to manifest these characteristics. Remember that Leviathan is the king of pride, right? So it's a haughty spirit. It's a difficult spirit. But this spirit after the third time in a year, now that's unusual. That's unusual. In March, when I did the the, the class, I did a teaching, tearing down Leviathan, right? But the, not like going against the principality, but tearing down that, that, that paradigm, that the structure that Leviathan built, the witchcraft, the nest that, that Leviathan, I confronted it and we did a clean sweep and that spirit retreated, right? That was the strategy that God gave me in that season was to teach on it, to expose it, to lead the whole church in repentance. I mean, people were on their faces. For any agreement with Leviathan, guess what? Whoosh, it left. It left. But after a third time in a year of dealing with those attacks, I did everything I needed to do. I'm not going to teach on it again. That wasn't the strategy. So I began to seek the Lord. Now, you have to understand, Leviathan is nothing to play with. I write about this in my book, uh, the, the Spiritual Warrior's Guide to Defeating Marine Demons. The Spiritual Warrior's Guide to Defeating Marine Demons. Okay, that is uh, a lot of the marine demons in there, not just Leviathan. You've got Rahab, you've got, you know, behemoths, which cross land and sea. You've got python spirits, all these things in the book. But I talk about it in depth. But I do want to say this. Leviathan is nothing to play with. And I see way too many people, you know, addressing Leviathan head on, by name, trying to bind it, tear it down. That's a good way to get yourself in a whole lot of trouble because scripture speaks against it. Scripture tells us not to do that. And, 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 and you know, I've got a prayer movement called Awakening Prayer Hubs. I mean, you need to join that, awakeningprayerhubs.com. But I have to make it very clear to my prayer hub leaders right off the bat. You do not go toe to toe with Leviathan. The Bible speaks against it because you'll bring prayer. You'll bring warfare over me and the whole movement. So we're very strict about that. Leviathan is nothing to play with. You can't put this spirit on a leash or appease it with compromise. I want to read you a scripture just so you know the seriousness, because I'm going to share with you this prophetic strategy for battling Leviathan that the Lord gave me which he's never said anything like this to me before. Like I've never, you know, never fought it this way before, but it's a new, it's a new strategy for a new season. So Job 41, five through seven, Job 41 verses five through seven, five, six, and seven says this, will you play with him as a bird or will you put him on a leash for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they divide him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Now, it goes on from there, but you need to really get this. We don't come against Leviathan directly. That's We don't do it. You shouldn't either. Historically, historically in the past, I told you one of the strategies was I taught about it in the church to try to dismantle the structures that it built in our ministry, you know, in the people. 
And in, in, in the past, we've, we've prayed against Leviathan's witchcraft because, see, principalities release powers. Principalities release powers. And so historically, we've, we've, we've prayed against binding Leviathan's witchcraft because Leviathan's witchcraft twists words. Leviathan's witchcraft drives offense to the foreground of the ministry or to your business or to your household. Right. So historically, we've bound the witchcraft. We've come against the twisting tactics of this principality, the haughty spirits that speak to the hearts of people who have common ground with the enemy. We've come against the spirit of offense that's stirred up by Leviathan. We've done all those things and we've found success. The issue is, is that the Bible says in Corinthians that it, Paul says, thanks be to God who always leads us into triumph. So if he's leading us, we'll win the battle. But if we don't consult him, he is not necessarily the one leading us. We're leading ourselves by our own reasoning. Or we're reading a book and saying, oh, this is my strategy. You know, I, I, well, so-and-so did this, so I'll do that. That can be helpful. You can see somebody else's strategy. You should pray about it and say, Lord, is this the strategy you want me to adopt? Right. David always prayed, Lord, shall I go up? Shall I go up several times in scripture? Shall I go up? Right. He was asking the Lord, should I fight this battle? Right. And then the Lord would tell him, go up for you shall recover all or wait for the sounds in the, in the mulberry trees, the rustling of the mulberry trees. God would respond to him and help him understand the timing, whether he should go, you know, the right, the way to go, the strategy. I cannot say this enough. I write about that in my book, uh, The 101 Tactics for Spiritual Warfare. We need to be led by the Spirit. So now I'm going to share with you what God, I've told you now how we've how we've dealt with in the past. We've taught on it. We've dealt with the witchcraft. We've, we've bound the spirit of offense. We're coming against the twisting tactics. So we're not going against Leviathan directly, but here's what the Lord said to me. And I was shocked. I was shocked. I was shocked. I was shocked. Now, this might not be your strategy, but this is a strategy and you should put it in your back pocket and pray about it if you're dealing with these kinds of attacks. So I sat down with the Lord to ask him what to do about this latest serious Leviathan attack against the church and against my life. Now, the Lord said pretty quickly, I didn't have to wait long. He said something that I did not expect him to say. If, if you'd have told me, you know, anybody else had told me this, I'd have said, that's not a strategy. You know, if, 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 you know, I would have said that that's not a strategy, but the Lord said this, listen, if you're listening, say amen. The Lord said this, you stop dealing with it and I'll deal with it. Wait, what? He said, you stop dealing with it and I'll deal with it. So another way to put this is the battle belongs to the Lord. And that is never more true than when dealing with Leviathan's attacks. You can't put a hook in his nose. Scripture says so. Now, I'm going to give you both sides of this because I don't want any of you to be on either side of the ditch of extremities in the realm of warfare. OK, the, a prophet in King Jehoshaphat's day prophesied this in Israel when they were surrounded by enemies. Second Chronicles 20, verse 15. Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, don't be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. All right. So sometimes so the battle is technically always the Lord's, but sometimes he uses you as the battle axe. Sometimes he will put his foot down until you put your foot down. OK, now let me just go back into this for a moment. Moses prophesied something similar. When the Egyptian army was closing in on them, the Israelites were facing the Red Sea in front of them and the enemy army behind them. And Moses said this in Exodus 14, verse three. He said, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. All right. And then David, the worshiping warrior, also understood this. In 1 Samuel 17, 47, he said this to Goliath. 
then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into your hands. So again, that's not always the right battle strategy. Now, I want to give you both sides of this. Yes, technically, the battle is always the Lord's, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to do your part. See, some believers will take this to the extreme and refuse to engage in spiritual warfare at any level beyond praise and worship. And that's wrong. That, that, that's, that's, not, that's not biblical, right? So while praise and worship, while praise and worship certainly are part of the battle strategy, and it could be the entire battle strategy, I write about that in my book, 101 Tactics for Spiritual Warfare. Often, often, in addition to praise and worship, we need to have we need to incorporate one or more additional strategies. Okay, so Jehoshaphat, for example, Jehoshaphat, he still had to prepare for battle. He was ready. He was willing to fight. Amen. He positioned himself rightly. He didn't just say, oh, good, I'm going to go soak now. Let the Lord let him do his thing. That's not the right attitude. We're in it with the Lord. Yes, the battle is his. But many times we have a part to play. Moses. Moses had to stretch out his hand over the sea before the waters parted so the Israelites could walk out of Egypt on dry land. What if what if Moses had just said, oh, let me just go, you know, let me just go, you know, praise and worship over here in the corner and see what God does. That wasn't what God meant. David still had to run to the battle line with his sling and a stone to cut off Goliath. He had to go. First of all, he had to use it. Then he had to go cut off Goliath's head. So he, David said, the battle's the Lord's, but David was the one with the slingshot. David was the one that took Goliath's sword and cut his head off with it. So just because the battle belongs to the Lord doesn't mean that you don't have a part to play. And that's the deception that's rolling around certain camps in the body of Christ. And so we, sometimes we take, listen, listen, let's, let's balance this out. Listen, if you're listening, say amen. Sometimes we take too much of the battle in our own hands. Sometimes we don't wait on the Lord. Sometimes we get very bravado and we charge ahead and we make a mess. Sometimes we're not content waiting on the Lord because we feel this sense of urgency. This is an emergency. The Spirit's jacking up my ministry or my household or my business. And we don't wait on the Lord for the strategy so that we can charge. And, and how do we charge out ahead of Him in our own wisdom and in our own strength? And sometimes we make matters worse by engaging enemies God has not called us to fight, such as Leviathan. Right. I mean, just because there's an enemy out there doesn't mean you're supposed to go pick a fight with it. We have to. Sometimes the Lord wants to fight the whole battle for us. Sometimes he does. So in this latest Leviathan battle, the Holy Spirit had one more thing to say. I told you the part of the strategy. Here's the other part. He said, you stop dealing with it and I'll deal with it. And I'm pondering this. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, he said, pray for the people. Pray for the people. Now, listen, by the people, he meant those who are puppets in the hand of Leviathan. And those Leviathan, those, those Leviathan, also those Leviathan is using as mouthpieces to gossip, slander, and libel us. So I pray for the people. As I pray for the people, as I'm faithful to pray, he takes down Leviathan. So why does that work? Why does that work? Why, why is that a strategy? Why? Why not just bind the witchcraft? Why not push back the darkness? Why not take authority? Well, by praying for the people who Leviathan is influencing to tear you down, it keeps me in a posture of humility, depending on the Lord, obeying Christ's command to love our enemies, to pray for those who abuse us, and it protects me from the influence of Leviathan, who, after all, is the king of pride. So I can't Take authority over the devil when I'm acting like the devil. So if I get proud in my spiritual warfare skills, I will not be successful in spiritual warfare because apart from God, apart from Christ, we can do nothing. And it's really true. He is the captain of the host. He is Jehovah Gabor. He is the one who fights our battles, the man of war. The Lord is his name, right? And so we need to get his strategy and he will tell us what our part is. Now, every Leviathan battle is not the same. But you can't go wrong. Listen, listen, you can't go wrong praying for the people who are being influenced by the spirit 
to come against you. You cannot go wrong. You maintain your authority in the spirit when you obey scripture. When you don't do what the scripture says, then your authority is diluted. You still have authority, but you're not as powerful because you're 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 not doing it his way. We have to do it. We have to do warfare God's way or it won't be effective. Right. Or it'll take longer. Right. So I wanted to share that with you. I want to pray. I want to remind you guys we have a prayer movement, a prayer family. It's called Awakening Prayer Hubs. And just for checking it out, there's a free ebook over there for you called Your Prophetic Armor. You can go and pick that up just for going and checking it out. I'm growing our prayer family. We're in 65 nations as of the time of this recording, and we're pressing through. We're doing so much prayer discipleship. I want you to be successful in every area of your life. And and prayer is the way. If we don't pray, uh, more and more things are going to get worse and worse. And so I want to invite you to go check that out at awakeningprayerhubs.com. Amen. Get on my newsletter list at jenniferleclair.org. Amen. And let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus name, would you help us to, pr- to fight your way? To understand that, yes, the battle is yours, but you have a strategy. You have a tactic. You have a way to take down the enemy of our soul. And sometimes you want us to go head on. Sometimes you've got a a sideways approach. Sometimes you've got a, a way that seems contrary to our way. But Lord, you are the way and you are the winning one. And the greater one is on the inside of us. So we will yield to you. Help us to yield to you, not to get ahead of you, not to be slack in the realm of spiritual warfare, but to stay on the offensive and to go after uh, your plan, your heart in the battle. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Have a breakthrough day.